kinetics and equilibrium, note page 215. So we are looking at factors that can impact or change the rate of a reaction. And on this page, these are things that we are able to manipulate in the lab. Okay, so thinking about temperature. So of course I want to talk about these as an increase in the rate of reaction, meaning I want the reaction to take less time, faster reaction. So if I want the reaction to happen faster, less time, that means I want an increase in the number of effective collisions. And effective collisions will occur more frequently if all the molecules have an increase in their motion. So the amount of motion or movement is tied to that Greek word kinetic. So that means I want to see an increase in kinetic energy. And the way that we monitor kinetic energy in the lab is by focusing on the Kelvin temperature of a sample. And it's a direct relationship between temperature and kinetic energy. So if it's a direct relationship, if more motion means a greater uh, kinetic energy present, that must mean a faster reaction will typically happen at a higher temperature. Number point three, okay, the concentration of a sample. So once again, I want an increase in the rate of reaction, therefore it taking less time. So if I look at picture one, and if each little circle here represents a mole, I'm going to say I have three moles of my solute in picture one, but then in picture two, I have five moles, two different number of moles. But those containers are the same size, so I'm going to say that they are one liter each. So my first container represents a molarity of three, and my other container represents a molarity of five. So when I go from picture one to picture two, three moles to five moles, I see an increase in the concentration because there's an increase in the number of moles. Take a look, it's the same size container, but the five molar solution, each of the particles has a little bit of less personal room to move, on, move around in, so there's an increase in the amount of contact between the particles. Therefore, that makes an increase in the number of collisions, which results in an increased rate of reaction. Now, the fourth manipulation in the lab could be pressure. Now, pressure is specialized. Pressure means, or we can only effectively use pressure for gas samples. So I'm going to write gas only. So if our system is made up of all solids, all liquids, or aqueous solutions, no gas molecules present, the pressure will have negligible, negligible effect. Okay, so take a look at my picture here. So from picture one to picture two. And if I count the molecules super carefully in this first picture, I have eight moles of molecules. Okay, and in the second picture, I also have eight moles of molecules. The difference between picture one and picture two is that this piston was pushed down, which creates an increase in the pressure of the system. And therefore, look at the amount of space occupied by those gas molecules. There's a decrease in the volume that the gas is allowed to occupy, so it's confined to a smaller space. So if you take a look, less space, that means that the molecules are going to run into each other a little bit more often, so that means an increase in the number of effective collisions. And more collisions means an increase in the rate of reaction or taking up less time. Now there's one other thing that I want to point out here, is that pressure we utilize with gas samples, and beside, and when we increase the pressure and change the volume that each of these gas samples occupies, we change something else. So in this first picture, I have eight moles of gas, and I want to make my life easy. So I'm going to say it occupies one liter. But in the other picture, I have the same number of gas molecules or moles of gas molecules present, 
but it's definitely a different volume, a smaller volume, so I'm going to say 0.5 liters. So in this case, I go from a sample of gas um, representing a concentration of 8 molarity to a gas concentration of 8 divided by 0.5, which is 16 molarity. So pressure is one way to uh, manipulate the concentration of a gas. So let's make a little bit of a note. So when you increase the pressure on a gas sample, okay, you decrease the volume occupied. So therefore, you cause an increase in the concentration of that gas sample. So pressure is used to manipulate the concentration of a gas. Now, another idea that we have covered, a way to manipulate the rate of reaction, is the surface area. So if you take a look at my original solute and the little arrows pointing onto it represents um, the other molecule trying to have the collisions with my first sample. And if you take a look at the second sample, you see that it's been broken apart and now there's little arrows in the middle part. So in the lab, I probably used a piece of equipment like a mortar and pestle in order to crush the reactant. And when I crushed the reactant, take a look, this part was not um, accessible by the other reactant, and now it is because there was an increase in the surface area exposed, which means there's an increase of possible contact contact area. And when more of a reactant is uh, contactable, that means we're going to have an increase in the number of effective collisions, leading to an increase in the rate of reaction, therefore requiring less time. Now, the last type of manipulation of changing the rate of reaction is the use of a catalyst. So the catalyst is a substance that is present, but it does not participate in the reaction. So its presence um, shortens the reaction mechanism. The catalyst provides an alternate reaction path by lowering the amount of activation energy. So take a look. We have two houses on opposite sides of a valley up on the mountainside and in the original pathway to get between these two houses you would have to go down the one mountainside, work your way through a village and then up the other mountainside. So you could get from Mountain House A to Mountain House B. But this little village has had a huge growth um, in tourism, so it gets very congested. So to alleviate some of the congestion, the engineers designed this bypass bridge. So now you have a choice from getting between Home A and Home B. You can still go the traditional route, down the mountain, through the little village, and up the next mountain, or you could go from House A across the expansion bridge and then ultimately to House B. So the catalyst functions like a bridge. Okay, It provides this alternate pathway where you can still go from your starting position to your ending position, but it's a shortened alternate pathway. It probably takes less effort to use the expansion bridge versus taking the traditional route. So less energy, shortened route.